are quite a few people in denial in and around the community other content creators in denial about what actually is going on on tv on wwe monday night and friday night i know a lot of people want to believe the product is getting better i know people want to believe the product is going to be the best it could very be the future is bright for wwe creative i get it i want it i want it more than anybody i mean i celebrated when vince went away for six months and we got triple h the real triple h running monday night and friday night you saw the difference he made almost instantly in how monday night and friday night ran then we started to see the downward decline of both raw and smackdown to where we see it now it's basically back to what it was a little bit better but basically back to the way it was before vince mcmahon went away for six months a lot of people are in denial and there's not one real story i could pinpoint to you guys about what really is going on and who really is running the show until today eric young who is eric young Eric Young is an impact staple. Eric Young was a WWE superstar that Triple H brought in many years ago to lead the group Sanity on NXT. I thought they were great. Remember them? They got called up to the main roster and then ultimately buried. And then all of them were fired by Vince McMahon's administration for one reason or another. Eric Young. He was brought back to WWE when Vince McMahon went bye-bye. Eric Young rumored to be working with Bray Wyatt on a possible Wyatt Six or a Wyatt Faction or be a part of the Wyatt Universe. Nobody knew, but Bray Wyatt and Eric Young were linked together in the rumors about his return to WWE. Eric Young was granted his release from WWE back in April of 2023, and he did not want to work for WWE because he did not want to work under Vince McMahon. Wow. Color me shocked. PW Insider's reporting that this week, Eric Young is in the news and possibly being the person who returns to Impact Wrestling, which he did. He showed up at Impact Wrestling's Slammiversary on Saturday night. Young had been under the WWE since 2022. Fightful Select reported that Eric Young spoke with Triple H last year about returning to the company. Young said in interviews that he felt like he had a lot more to give as a wrestler rather than in a backstage capacity, and he expressed expressed issues working with Vince McMahon. He also talked about WWE's system being broken, but that was before McMahon stepped down last year. With Triple H running creative, quote-unquote, Young was brought back last November, but never did anything of note on TV, and he would ask for his release just months later. Fightful is now updating this story and noted that Eric Young asked to be let go in April of 2023 and it was granted. His 90-day non-compete ended last week, which makes it possible for him, obviously, to return to Impact Wrestling. Fightful cited WWE sources saying that Eric Young did not want to work under Vince McMahon after he returned to the company in an official capacity. Young reported citing moral, creative, and personal reasons for why he did not want to return to the WWE and work under Vince McMahon. Many of you will recall that Eric Young's previous stint on the main roster was with Sanity, which basically Vince McMahon completely embarrassed and disbanded and ultimately fired after they got called up from Black and Gold NXT to Friday Night SmackDown. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. A lot of people are uh, so much in denial about what is going on to a point where a lot of people in the community are labeling me as a conspiracy theorist. I got Vince McMahon on the mind 24-7. I'm a puppet and blah, blah, blah. I am dancing in Vince McMahon's mind and all this other shit. All this other shit. If Eric Young, if Eric Young wanted to be back in WWE, and wanted to be back in WWE when Triple H ran the show, there's a good reason for that. Because he knew Triple H was going to take care of him because Triple H took care of him in the previous stint that he had with the company. But Eric Young, Eric Young doesn't want to be there because of Vince McMahon, who 
by the reports that we see every week, is working remotely. Is working remotely. He's not even there in a backstage capacity yet. Vince McMahon works remotely from Titan Tower or remotely from wherever he is holed up. He may actually fucking be there for all we know, but they don't report it. We don't know. But I'm going to go off the basis of what we've read and that Vince McMahon is there remotely. So Eric Young doesn't want to work for the WWE. X for his release, citing Vince McMahon as the reason. The same Vince McMahon that's working remotely. It's kind of odd. You don't find nothing wrong with that. If Eric Young wanted to be in the WWE, he'd be in the WWE. He doesn't, for one reason, Vince McMahon. Do you genuinely think Eric Young would have asked for his release if Triple H was running the creative department? 100%. Do you genuinely believe Eric Young would have asked for his release if Triple H was the man in charge 100% of WWE creative? The answer is no. The answer is no. Eric Young knows that the writing was on the wall, or knew the writing was on the wall as soon as Vince McMahon started to inch his way back into the company. He saw it. Eric Young wanted out. Eric Young wanted out not only because of Vince McMahon's presence looming like a dark fucking shadow over the entire company creatively, but he knew that he was never going to be used in a creative capacity because Vince McMahon is running the show and Vince McMahon has no desire, no interest in using somebody like Eric Young on the roster at his age, which is bullshit because there are people on that roster that are older than Eric Young. Stop listening to the fucking people out there that want to paint this picture that WWE is ran by the new administration. I'm not saying that Triple H isn't running creative. He is, to an extent. Triple H is basically a front man. He's a front man who is the public figure with others behind him making the decision because they don't want to be blamed for when things go wrong. They'll gladly blame Triple H. I don't know how many times I have to explain this to people. Vince McMahon is running the show. Eric Young is one of many examples of why people do not want to be there. Eric Young is one of many examples as to why people are upset. They were going to let someone like Eric Young go because they knew. Triple H knew. Fucking William Regal knew. Everybody knew. Let him go. There's nothing that we could do here. I tried. I tried. I tried. My father-in-law's back. There's nothing I can do. That's... That's just the way it is. They're not going to use Eric Young. They let him go. They, they let him go. I, I, I mean, I'm just so dumbfounded at how people just don't understand it. Not everybody's going to be asking for their release because not everybody's Eric Young. They don't find any value in Eric Young. Nobody's going to, nobody there is going to just get up and say, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm, I'm tired of this shit. Vince is back. I can't stand it. I want out. Eric Young thought he had a second lease on life here, and then he saw what was happening around him and said, you know what? I wanted to be here. I wanted to give it another shot. I was going to give my trust to Triple H, and that's it. I'm out. I'm out. Open your eyes. It's not a conspiracy theory. Triple H may be the guy to you, but he's not really the, ma- he's not really the man running creative. It's Vince McMahon, and this is the perfect example that I could use to show you guys and tell you guys that, hey, this guy was with the company. He doesn't want to be there. He left. The extras released. Why? Because Triple H is not the one in charge. Vince McMahon's running the show. Don Callis. This is a sad fucking story, man. This is really just ridiculous. And I am just dumbfounded at how just people are in the wrestling community. The original story reads, a scary situation happened following Saturday's Triple Mania event in Tijuana where Kenny Omega lost to uh, Vikingo in the main event. Don Callis, who has been feuding with Omega for months after turning on him, was at ringside for the match. Conan sent Callis to the back. Vikingo won the match after pinning Omega with a 630 splash. Following the show, Omega was talking with the local media when there was an angle where Omega and Callis exchanged words. Omega was attacked by Konosuke Takeshita to further their feud. This is when things got real as a fan attacked Callus from behind until security broke it up. The fan must have been upset 
over something Don Callis said. Brian Alvarez is reporting that Callis, who had a bad neck, had a bloody mouth and other injuries, including his neck and ankle because of this attack. He was going to San Diego for medical attention. Alvarez reiterates the situation was absolutely not a work. Everything was an angle up until the fan attacking Callis. Then the fan, who apparently was upset about what Don had said to Kenny, jumped Don from behind, ripped his suit, concussed his eardrum, and busted open his mouth while he was trying to choke out Don from behind. Don was screaming profanities at the fan before he was pulled off and was said to be livid afterwards. There's an update on this. It appears this was a situation where the media person wasn't clued in on there being an angle and tried to get Callis down to the ground and away from Omega. So, I don't know what was... I, I, I don't know. I, I, listen, I, I don't know if this... I'm very confused by this. It says, it appears this was a situation where the media person was clued in on there being an angle and tried to get Callis down to the ground and away from Omega. I, I think... Maybe it reads that they were clueless about the angle with Kenny and Don, and the fan got upset, and they, they didn't realize what the fuck was going on here. The fan, the fan interaction was real. Whatever happened to Don Callis was real, but the media wasn't clued in on the angle-taking part after the match was over, so I'm guessing that's what that is meaning there. Fans are ridiculous. This is... It's laughable, man. People people label me as as a fucking outcast and a cancer in the community. Yet you got stories like this and fans like this who can't decipher what is real and what is not real. Don Callis was attacked for what he said to Kenny Omega in a storyline, and a fan took it personally and attacked Don Callis. I mean, how ridiculous does that sound? How much of a no life fucking virgin geek? Absolutely just deplorable fucking human being, a degenerate to this society. How much of a degenerate do you have to be to take what these men and women are doing to heart like that to go attack a talent? It's ridiculous. Absolutely fucking insane. Wrestling fans are the dumbest fucking people that you could possibly find in any genre of sport, period. They are dumb. This is just another example, another cherry on top of that fucking shit Sunday for fans of social media and fans of wrestling. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And finally, guys, update on Carlito. Carlito was supposed to return to WWE, but there is news on why he did not return to SmackDown at Madison Square Garden. PW Insider noted that he was expected back last week at Madison Square Garden. Plans changed and Carlito was not in New York City last Friday, but he did travel to the Northeast for, for the weekend, and he was spotted at the airport waiting to get on a flight to Pittsburgh. Now, for what it's worth, Pittsburgh is where wrestlers go to get evaluated before they are cleared to wrestle, so that may be why he was flying to Pittsburgh. Dave Meltzer reported in the Observer Newsletter this week that the reason why Carlito did not return last Friday is because they had so much to cram into SmackDown. In fact, the Bloodline segment went 40 minutes, and they still had to get the closing Bloodline segment, which meant that several segments and matches had to be cut from the show. A couple of years back, there was talk about Carlito returning full-time to work backstage after he appeared at the Royal Rumble. Those talks fizzled out, but when he was brought back for backlash in Puerto Rico to aid in Bad Bunny beating Damian Priest, WWE management took note at how over he was, and the crowd reaction was massive. Of course it was. Of course it was. Everybody in Puerto Rico on that weekend was fucking high energy over. I mean, it, it's, it goes without saying. I mean, that's just a terrible example. You can't use that. It's not really fair. But Carlito, I do believe if he comes back to the company, comes back to SmackDown, he will be as over as I remember him being. He, he was over. I just called a match with Solo Monster inside House of Glory where he wrestled Zack Ryder or Matt Cardona, and he was incredibly over then. Fans loved him. Fans just love Carlito, and I think he looks fucking phenomenal. He's in the best shape of his life, and I do think that he could give back to the WWE if they want to utilize him correctly. I do think that he's got a few years of a, of a big-time run in him. I don't know if it would be for a world championship, but for a United States championship, an intercontinental championship, I do think that he has a ton left to give to the WWE, and they would be lucky to get someone like Carlito back in their locker room. I really do. And I do believe that this was the case. I, and I, I, I actually am siding with WWE on this. Even if he was to debut at Madison Square Garden last Friday, 
I do think that it was probably best to hold him off because he would have been swallowed up and nobody would have really cared about his return outside of that huge bloodline angle, the trial of Roman Reigns, the tribal court of Roman Reigns. I mean, it would have been an afterthought. And you're bringing somebody like back to the comp- like that back to the company after all these years. You want it to make you want it to be a statement. You want it to really feel special. And anything outside the bloodline right now is not going to feel special on SmackDown, which is basically the way it is every single week. It's the bloodline, and then everything else is just fucking unimportant. So you don't really want to do that. You want to do it on a down week. You want to do it on an off week, and have Carlito be one of the standout acts to make his return feel significant and special. I do agree with WWE by not doing it at Madison Square Garden. It wouldn't have came off as it needed to be. Thank you, guys. I appreciate all your support this week. I will be back with more news as it breaks. Hit that thumbs up. Let's try for 1,000 likes minimum today on OTS. Make sure you guys follow me on social media, at JD from NY206, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications, and make sure you guys go check out all the other content on the channel. We were live on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. We got a ton of content on the homepage if you guys missed any of it from the podcast. I appreciate you guys. And again, if any news breaks, whether it's today, tomorrow, the rest of the week, man, we're going to start and bring you guys all the news with a brand new week tomorrow on Monday right here on OTS. Until then, guys, enjoy your Sundays, enjoy the rest of your weekends, and I'll see you right back here with more news on OTS. I'll see you guys later.